Welcome to another tier maker. It's been a while since we've done one, but this is John Hughes movies. If you're under the age of 30, you're probably maybe going to know one or two of these. Unless you're a movie buff, or maybe your parents watched a lot of 80s movies, in which case, stick around. You're gonna, we're going to have some fun here. All right. Look, some of these movies I haven't seen, but I'd say about two-thirds of them I have. So let's have some fun with this one. I like this because he didn't make 500 movies. The ones he's made are all kind of popular up to a point. A few of them, not so much. He obviously took some studio jobs in a couple of these later films that he made. This is not chronological, by the way. This list is not chronological. But there are a few I haven't seen. And let's get to them. She's having a baby. <clears throat> don't care. Don't know, don't care. Sorry. Dutch. No, haven't seen it. I think I watched maybe 15 or 20 minutes of it, and I didn't care. And I turned it off. Like on cable. Go away. Curly Sue. Haven't seen it. Home Alone 3. Haven't seen it. Did anyone see Home Alone 3? I don't think anyone saw Home Alone 3. You did. Juggernaut did. Hey, let me, by the way, I gotta change my stream information. Maker John Hughes films, bam! It was uh, a movie. <laughs> um, let's just say I don't. I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm not gonna spoil it. Uh, 101 Dalmatians, the Disney movie with Glenn Close. Haven't seen it. When it comes to Disney movies, they're really hit or miss for me, and mostly miss. I'm not the core demo on something like this. Disney had a had a stretch where they were doing a lot of live action movies based on some of their cart um, of their cartoons of their animated films, which they're coming back and doing again as they made Cruella recently. They just keep going back to that well. So, um, Riz says the live action 101 Dalmatians is actually very good. Okay, haven't seen it. Is Cruella as good? Because the reviews on that weren't so great. I uh, I like Emma Stone. I like her a lot. Didn't really care to see the movie, though. You agree, Riz? No interest in Cruella. Yeah, same. Not really my thing. I like puppies. But we don't need people out to, um, going out and um, adopting a bunch of Dalmatians because they're 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 difficult to, to take care of. And when those movies were popular, people went out and adopted a bunch of Dalmatians, realized that they're actually a lot more high maintenance than the average dog. A lot of things you have to do to take care of a, a Dalmatian, and they end up going back to the shelters, or people would go and release them. It's just, it's ter it's terrible. So, one of the drawbacks of those movies being popular, for sure. I haven't seen the movie. Couldn't tell you if it's any good or not, but it looks like chat likes it. So, good to know. Uh, let's go to an early one. Career opportunities. This is a guilty pleasure movie. This is an earlier John Hughes film. Well, is it early? When did this come out? So I'm going to put on my second screen here, I'm going to get his films in chronological order because I want to be able to, to know where he was with his movies. All right. His first movie he ever directed was 16 Candles. So let's, let's let, other than career opportunities, which I've already put up there, let's go in chronological order. So career opportunities. Uh, Frank Whale? Frank Whaley? How do you say his name? Let's go... Where's Career Opportunities? Oh my god, it was 1991. It seems so much older than that. Frank Whaley in his first lead role. Um, Jennifer Connelly was kind of, I want to say, at the peak of her younger career around this time. Frank Whaley gets the lead. Very likable guy. Kind of like um, uh, Can't Buy Me Love. Very similar to Can't Buy Me Love, except him... The, the premise is different. He and her are stuck in a shopping mall in a target i think they're stuck in a target overnight and they can't get out because the doors are locked a dumb conceit right but it was fun for the time he and her kind of fun chemistry together he's the nerd she's the popular girl right we've seen it all a hundred times but this movie 
when it first came out, it was kind of fresh at the time. So it's been done so many times since then. It's just like whatever. So I, I rank it as a B. It's a low B. I think when other films come in here, it'll probably end up being a low B. All right, we're going to go chronological order, and that puts us at 16 candles. <sighs> this film put John Hughes on the map. This film hasn't aged well in some areas. Long Duck Dong. Cringe. It's cringe right now. Having said that, it is very important in his overall um, oh god there's a word I'm looking for and I can't find it in his overall catalog it's important because it's the one that basically made him bankable and it also showed that he understood how teenagers talked and how teenagers thought so watching that film it felt honest even though it was a little ridiculous it felt honest minus a couple of cringe moments that have not aged well we'll leave it at that anthony michael hall i mean there's so many stars in this movie matt dillon molly ringwald anthony michael hall john cusack uh oh god let's just go down the list who else is in this movie like who isn't in in 16 candles uh the parents are all iconic too uh uh paul dooley was the dad paul dooley great in 80s movies uh who else did we have in here yeah, John Cusack. Joan Cusack was the geek girl. All right, remember her? Uh, who am I forgetting? I basically just named everyone of the main people, but what a cast at the time. It's an A for me. When it's on cable, I can still watch it and enjoy it. Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club is S tier. Breakfast Club is, it might be his, uh, no, I don't want to say it's his best film, but it's close. It's very close to his best film. I don't think I'm going to surprise too many people with, with my rankings on a couple of these, but it is all the, all the, arch, all the archetypes of the high school kids were in this, the jock, the nerd, the the wasteoid um the popular girl and the unpopular girl like those five they hit all those those archetypes and the way the day goes on and the way they kind of change the way they look at each other you know if they made a sequel they probably would all go right back to school on monday and act like none of them exist but for that little moment of time and it takes place in that one day it's such a great script it is a great script uh, Robin, it's already midnight, and I wanted to do a tear maker, so yeah. yeah, I played for two and a half hours. I think that's good, right? Because I started around 9.30. I think Breakfast Club is one of John Hughes' best films. Now, Robin, I'm guessing you probably haven't seen any of these. Maybe one or two. The younger you are, the odds are, the more the odds are you probably haven't seen too many John Hughes movies. And that's okay. But he's made some pretty good movies, and some of them have still stand up to the test of time today. I think I think Breakfast Club stands up, stands the test of time. It, it's aged a bit, and there's one or two lines and and words that are used that are slurs more so now than they were then. But damn, if that script doesn't really nail the time period and nail the way that that teenagers talked to each other back then, it really did. Uh, European Vacation. He was the screenplay writer on that, so he's not the director. Okay. Oh, I skipped. Okay, so here's the thing. National Lampoon's Vacation. He wrote the screenplay, but he did not direct it. I'm still going to put it up here, though, and I'm going to put it as a high B. So if you have that, where's European Vacation? So this list is a little janky, let's be honest. Because European Vacation is probably low C, high D. Some good, A couple of good laughs, not very good. All right? It's okay. It's not terrible. Breakfast Club is still good. Yeah, yeah, for reals. It, it's still good today. European was the bottom of the barrel. Uh, no. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. 
I don't want to push it too much. So I guess National Lampoon's Vacation is on here, even though he didn't direct that. It's kind of weak sauce to put that in here, but we'll, we'll include it. European Vacation, he also wrote the story in the screenplay, but that's not on this list. What's next? Weird Science. All right, this is for me. All right, this is one for me. I've seen Weird Science more than any of these other movies combined. I had it dubbed from cable on VHS, and my friend Chris and I watched this movie all the time. Every weekend, without fail, it was on in the background or we were watching it. Weird Science, for years. It was just one of those movies that made us laugh constantly. It's super ridiculous. Robert Downey Jr.'s in it. Anthony Michael Hall again, of course. Um, Bill Paxton is the older brother. He's so good. He's the perfect heel. He's so over the top and so hilarious. Love him. Love him. Rest in peace, Bill Paxton. Weird Science is not an S-tier movie, probably, when you look at it in terms of the way it's filmed, uh, the, the, the special effects, his scripts. It's not one of his better scripts, for sure. But for me, it's S-tier. Low S, all right? I can't put it above Breakfast Club or any other films that come in here. But I'll be damned if I can't quote that entire script from memory. So you gotta give it love. You gotta. Absolutely S tier, says Juggernaut. My dad showed me that movie when I was like 12. S minus. That's what I'm thinking. S minus. It is. And it still holds up. Very 80s. The haircuts, the cars, uh, the clothes they're wearing at the shopping mall. <laughs> Uh, when they go to the the, the the scene with the shopping mall, the party. It's just... It, most of John Hughes' movies were mostly realistic with a little bit of ridiculousness. Weird Science was completely ridiculous, but with characters that you believed and that you rooted for. Around them was just a bunch of crazy-ass shit. So that's why I think I like that movie so much because it knows it's stupid and it's totally tongue-in-cheek the entire time. When when they go and visit Gary's parents and she hypnotizes his parents because they hate her the, is just comedy for days. And it's it's so over the top. I don't care. It's I love the movie. I love it. Pretty in Pink, he is executive producer and writer, not a director. But here it is on the list. And here's the thing. I'm going to put it in between these two in the B section. I think Pretty in Pink is a good movie. It has not aged as well as some of his other films. I think it's because the story isn't all that compelling. It's just a love triangle is all it is. But is it kind of a triangle? Maybe one of those lines is kind of a dotted line? Again... Good. The script itself, the, the, the dialogue is good. I just, there's not enough going on in it to make it that repeatable for me. I've probably seen it twice in my life. Good movie. Perfectly watchable, recommendable. Mid tier B for me. Chat, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. I know some of y'all are going to say Pretty Pink is one of his best films. And. If you connected to it, like I connected to something stupid like Weird Science, I totally buy that. I totally buy that. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. S tier. In spite of Matthew Broderick killing someone with his car. Uh, off screen. In spite of that. This movie's S tier, and it is so repeatable. I'm putting it a hair behind Breakfast Club because... It's more fun than Breakfast Club, but it kind of straddles the line between Breakfast Club's sincerity and Weird Science's ridiculousness. It's a little of both. And I gotta tell you, there's a theory out there that this entire film belongs to Cameron. It is Cameron's film, and there's even a theory out there that it's all like a daydream of Cameron's, which I'm like, I, I don't buy those theories. Anytime you say that, oh, it was all a daydream, I think that's lazy. Having said that, it's his film. Ferris Bueller is just the catalyst for a lot of the things that happen. So they go to Wrigley Field and say, hey, bad about it. There's so many iconic lines in this. Abe Froman, Sausage King of Chicago. Uh, and when it's on cable, you're damn right I'm going to sit there and watch it. 
it's just it's so watchable his his uh older sister older sister was she older in the movie or same age i can't remember um oh god uh, uh uh dirty dancing oh god what's her name she got a nose job and no one recognized her what is her name you know i'd tell you if you're wrong i know that Riz. i was i was baiting you like come on tell me i'm wrong tell me i'm wrong y'all are good with pretty and pink no de no debate on this one no debate on this one from from juggernaut talking about ferris bueller's day off i assume <sighs> what is her name gray jennifer gray strength for the mind i knew i'd get there jennifer gray great as the kind of heel sister uh you're kind of rooting for ferris the whole film even though he's a dick and he's a dick uh but cameron's the, the real hero of the movie yeah there's a lot of things i could say about ferris Bueller's day off Unfortunate that the school principal ended up become uh, being a pedophile in real life. Got to can't not mention that, but that doesn't take points away from the movie. You can't. I can't dock the film for that. All right, that came out like 25, 30 years later. Can't dock the movie for that. I'm not going to praise his performance. I'll just state that for the fact. Okay. <sighs> Want a gummy bear? <laughs> the bus ride at the end. I love how they rolled the credits during that entire bus ride. It's so good. It's almost like an outtake. Uh, some kind of wonderful. I I'm putting it as a C because it really is just kind of a rehashed version of Pretty in Pink. With a very 80s cast. Eric Stoltz. Yeah, I just... It's not a bad movie. Leah Thompson and Mary Stuart Masterson. That's right. It was a teen drama. It was very heavy on the drama. It just, yeah, it was watchable. Once was enough. I can't put it as a D because it's not, it's not terrible. It's just okay. Now we're getting into the later movies. The same year as some kind of wonderful, we got planes, trains, and automobiles. And I'm going to tell you folks, I haven't seen this movie as much as I've seen Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, or Weird Science. But I'll be damned if it isn't his best film. Hands down. John Candy and Steve Martin in their prime. A fantastic script. A road movie. A holiday movie. You believe everything about these two. You just believe the way they are with each other. There's no questioning. These are two real people. John Candy seems a little ridiculous at first, and then you're like, I know people like this guy. I totally know people like this guy. Damn. From the start to the very end, it earns the emotion that it has more than any other film that John Hughes has ever made earns it completely and I can't stress it more than to say if you haven't seen planes trains and automobiles it holds up better than any of his other films do I think something about the way that the characters are dressed and there's not a lot of 80s feel to it and I say that because I think it came out in 90 no 87 but I think it's aged better than any of other of John Hughes's other films so I think it's his best film. I'm going to put it up there. Even though it's not as repeatable as as the other three, I do think it's his best film, and I'm going to put it as, as, as the top of the S's. Chat? Thoughts? Is that controversial? Are we good with planes, trains, and automobiles? Steve Martin's speech to is it at the airport when he just goes off and drops all those F-bombs is master class in writing, in in acting his delivery flawless the editing in it perfect it is not that scene the movie got an r rating because of that but they left it in because john hughes was like no this is exactly 
this character was pushed to the edge and he falls off of it and he falls off of it in a believable way and we need this scene in there and he he the movie got an r rating and it definitely affected the box office Juggernaut says, I've honestly only seen it a few times and it's been a while since my last. I don't know if I could place it right now. It's on cable a lot during Thanksgiving era because I think it it's it's not a Christmas movie. It's a Thanksgiving movie. I'm going to triple check that because I haven't seen it in, in quite a few years. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Yep, I got it. Okay, I just wanted to be triple, triple sure. Uh, it's a wonderful film. It's funny in a more subtle way. The writing in it is it's the best of any of his scripts for sure. And he wrote and directed and produced it. So kudos. He also wrote the lyrics to one of the songs in it. Funny enough. All right. Cable, bro. I haven't had cable since the Cubs were cursed. Well, that wasn't that long ago. Um, streaming services. It's, it's out there. It's out there. Watch it on Thanksgiving weekend. I, I guarantee you're, you'll enjoy it. Rewind. All right. The next movie on his list. She's having a baby, which I, I put down and haven't seen. Don't care. The Great Outdoors. He didn't write that. Uh, he didn't direct it. You know, if The Great Outdoors was on this list, it's probably a D. It's not a great movie. The The scene where they go eat the, the 72-ounce steak or whatever, is basically they took that idea from... Uh, Big Tex in, in Amarillo. I lived there for a while. It's kind of funny. The raccoon thing with the trash cans. It, it's just not a good movie. I would put it as a D. It's not an F, but it's not great. Uh, but it's not on this list. Uncle Buck is. Uncle Buck is an A. Another John Candy masterpiece. He is so good in this movie. And maybe it's just a tiny bit manipulative towards the end but I mostly believe that he won those kids over I do you can see it in the film you can see the way he wins them over just at being who he is it wears them down a little uh, but wins them over I think it's kind of a little bit of a repeat of some of the themes that have been in his other films it's still a really good movie mm, god is it an A though god the more I think about it it's kind of a B yeah no it's a B Take a quarter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to put it as a B. I can't put it up there with 16 Candles. It's not that high. Some people think it's one of John Hughes's best films. That's the great thing about John Hughes films. People connect to different films of his at different times in, in their life. You know, my, like you said, my dad showed me this movie a bunch of times, and, and I love it. So I've had I've had friends that tell me they think Uncle Buck is, is the best John Hughes movie. I disagree, obviously. But it's still a good movie. B is fair. All the movies left at the bottom for me are A and S. Oh, no. Yeah. Sure. Uh, all right. And Christmas Vacation, he didn't direct that either. But it's on this list. Whoever made this list is a little screwy. I'm going to sort out some food. All right. Cool, Robin. Uh, it, it's midnight. I forget wh that you moved to this time zone. No, I'm biased. I was born in 89. Mm, you're a little younger than me. A little bit. But we'll do Christmas Vacation anyway, even though it's not his film. He wrote it and produced it? Yes. <sighs> I'm going to catch flack for this. I'll be honest. I think it's emotionally manipulative. I don't think it earns the, the the emotions that it tries to get at the end. It's it it's a little too obvious. And when I watch the film, I think it's a good Christmas movie. But for me, it doesn't break out of that good Christmas movie thing. Now, there are people that would have me flog for this. Christmas Vacation is the best Christmas movie of all time. It's the best Chevy Chase film of all time, which is bullshit. All right, that's probably Fletch. Um, it just all of that. It... Literally, I work with a guy who his husband is like the biggest Christmas vacation fan you will ever see. I'm not kidding. Griswold. He is Clark Griswold. It's not even funny. I'm sorry. For me, it's perfectly fine. I saw it in a theater when it came out. I was like, that was pretty good. It's pretty good. 
you know, six and a half, seven out of ten. Maybe a B minus, C plus. Juggernaut says unsubscribe. All right. Sorry about that. It's not the best Christmas or Chevy movie. Okay. At least we agree on that. Uh, ooh, Christmas movies. Is, ooh, we're doing a Christmas movie tier maker in December. It's happening. It's a, it's a decent movie. Worth watching. And people who want to watch it over and over again at the holiday, help yourself. Help yourself. I just don't think it's that great. There are iconic moments in it. Randy Quaid, over the top and funny. A lot of laughs, shitters full. Yeah. It's okay. Die Hard, damn it. Oh, God. Yeah, you down with that, Riz? Christmas movie tier maker? We're going to do that. Oh, you didn't move here. You just, you're in town. You're in the, the time zone for a week or so. Ah, okay. Probably on a work trip. Um, oh, Die Hard's a Christmas movie. Yes, that, that that stopped being an interesting or hot take like 15 years ago. <laughs> the first time I heard someone argue that, I went, mm, I mean, it takes place at Christmas. For me, a Christmas movie is something that is about families getting together or something related to Christmas. Die Hard's an action movie that happens to take place at Christmas. It's not, it's not a Christmas movie in the way that you think of Christmas movies. If we're going to do that, any movie that has ever had a Christmas tree in the background... Uh, Gremlins is more of a Christmas movie than Die Hard. All right? The Mogwai, Gizmo... Don't you call him a Gremlin, he's a Mogwai. Gizmo was a, it was a Christmas gift purchased in Chinatown in San Francisco. When they come back home, the dad comes back home. That is a Christmas movie. I'm trying to trigger people. Is it working? Uh, I just like to cause shit. I called Gremlins a Christmas movie earlier this week and started a flame war. It, it's... There's a gray area, all right? Die Hard's in the gray area. If you want to believe it's a Christmas movie, help yourself. I have a friend, really good friend, one of my best friends, watches it with his wife every Christmas without fail. Die Hard. Okay, look, you could do a lot worse. You could be watching It's a Wonderful Life, and, and that movie just... Ugh, great for its time. Not a lot of fun to watch right now. All right, the last three, we're, 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 we're finishing strong here, and I'm not even going to look at the rest of the, uh, the chronological order. Home Alone. D. God, I hate this fucking movie. I hate this fucking movie. And we'll go ahead and put Home Alone 2 as an F. I fucking hate them. I hate the Home Alone movies. I hate them. 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 The most basic, bullshit, cheesy family comedies. The Pratt Falls are good. I'll give Pesci and what's his name? He was in Celtic Pride. Fine. They're good at the Pratt Falls. Congratulations. I hate this movie. I hated Macaulay Culkin. I hated his all screaming thing he did. Uh, it's It wasn't clever to me. It wasn't funny. Uh, there's a lot of quotes in it that have come through my brain because of cultural osmosis. I don't like the movie. At all. I'm only putting it as a D because I understand its importance in the pantheon of Christmassy family type movies. Sure. It spawned all of this stuff and it was a humongous hit. I saw it in a theater. My dad and I went. And I just sat there the whole time like, I, f I, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I, this is not funny to me at all. I'm not the core demo, maybe. I was like 15 when it came out. So, I put that, that's on me, okay? Juggernaut says, if I didn't grow up with these movies, I'd agree with you. I was already a teenager. When did, when did that come out? 90? 91? Uh, Home Alone. When did Home Alone 1 come out? 90. Yeah, so I was already 15 or 16. I wasn't having it. Right. If I was eight or nine, five or six, probably would have been a favorite movie of mine. The first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. It's a bad movie. But it's fun bad. This was a fun family movie that I had no interest in. Just none. Home Alone 2. I watched it. I wish I hadn't. I haven't seen Home Alone 3. Can't tell you if it's any good. 
All I know is Macaulay Culkin was too old to be the cute kid anymore, so they put some other kid in there. And I think they're making a Home Alone movie that's going to be on Disney Plus this Christmas. Like, I saw a trailer for it, and I went, really? How many times can you put marbles on a staircase? Three was not good. I w <laughs> like, I would waste my time watching Home Alone 3, considering my feelings for the first two. Uh, I have seen Dennis the Menace, and it's worse than Home Alone 2. My god. It, I don't know if it... I hope John Hughes got a hell of a paycheck to do that movie. I do. It is... It makes Home Alone 2 look like Goodfellas. No thank you. Not interested. <laughs> Not the core demo, right? Again, Dennis the Menace came out... How, how old was I? Dennis the Menace movie. It was older than that, right? 93. I graduated from high school in 1993. Okay? No. No. No, no, no. Alright. So. This is my ranking of John Hughes movies. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, I think is his best film. It's not as repeatable. Well, it is. It's just not as whimsical. But there's a lot of great subtle humor. Love the script. Breakfast Club. Five great uh, characters all put together, perfectly cast. Everyone cast in that film does exactly what they need to do. And it's great. And I I love that movie, and I've watched it many times. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Very fun movie. A little ridiculous. It's about Cameron. It's not about Ferris. But, again, great casting. And it's a really good script. It's a lot of fun. Weird science. Completely ridiculous. So stupid. Probably should be an A or B for most people, but for me, it is. it was my... I watched that film more growing up. If you told me I've seen it 50 times, I'd tell you that's a low number. It's probably more than that. 16 Candles, the one that started it all for John Hughes. That's, a, that's an A. Hasn't aged as well as some of his other films. Still pretty good. And it deserves to be an A. It does. Um, Riz says, I like Home Alone and Dennis the Menace. Okay. Did you watch them? You were younger. You are younger. How old were you when you saw them? This is not an admonishment. Admonishment? It's just a question. I'm thinking if I was younger, I would have. I would like them more. I would rank them higher. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, uh, National Lampoon's Vacation is on this list, even though he didn't direct it. And Christmas Vacation. Uh, Vacation is a movie. It was very influential for the time. It was an R-rated comedy. Um, I know Porky's and those started coming around that time as well, but Vacation came a little after Animal House, I think, but it was still a funny movie for its time. It hasn't aged as well. It was on TV recently, eh, about a year ago, and I watched some of it, and I'm like, mm. they remade it, which is just why. Uncle Buck, good movie. Good movie. Not uh, John Candy's best, but still very good. Pretty in Pink. One of the better, like, straight dramas that he's made. I think that's why I don't really get into that one or some kind of wonderful. They're pretty much straight dramas with, like, a laugh or two. And I don't think John Hughes is just doing straight drama is as enjoyable. I don't. Career opportunities, a little guilty pleasure, but fun. Two, two people, nerd guy, hot girl, locked in a mall, or locked in a Target overnight. It's good stuff. Christmas Vacation, eh. Not bad. Not great, in my opinion. People love it. No one hates it. I mean, why would you hate Christmas Vacation? It's it's an earnest movie. I just I just don't think it's that great. Uh, Home Alone. We've already gone over it. Don't care. Don't care. Get out of here. Dennis the Menace. I watched that. That's a 90 minutes I'll never get back. But, again, I was a senior in high school when that came out. Not the core demo. And if I could go back and watch it when I was a little kid, maybe I would have liked it a little more. So that's it. That is my list of John Hughes films. I know some of you are probably too young to have seen some of them, and that's fine. It's totally fine. I enjoy a lot of these movies. Even the ones I have ranked a little lower, like Christmas Vacation, some kind of wonderful. They're good movies. They're good. They're good. I just don't think they're as good enough to be up higher. So, All right. What do you think of these films? Throw it in the chat. You, 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 what do you think of the list? Juggernaut says he thinks it's a fair list, sir. You don't have to sir me, but thank you. If you're watching this on YouTube, 
What's your favorite John Hughes movie? What's your least favorite John Hughes movie? Are any of these down in the bottom that I haven't seen? She's having a baby. 101 Dalmatians, Curly Sue, Dutch, or Home Alone 3. Are any of those any good? Home Alone 3 is not any good. Just uh, sa save your time. Save your trouble. Save your fingers. We know that's not good. But the other four, are they any good? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Tell me what you think in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Otherwise, it is 12.30 on a Tuesday night. I gotta get to bed. I gotta work in the morning. So, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you on the next one.